Clarity Project. This is a show about all things real estate, business, marketing, and entrepreneurship. Each show consists of myself, Matt Literacy, a member of my team, and a guest. Today's Matt Literacy Group member is none other than the South African sensation, Mickey Hobson. Good to be here. Mickey, how are we doing today? Solid. Solid. I like that. I like that. So for those of you that don't know, uh, Mickey is actually my brother-in-law. He married my wife's middle sister, Kimberly, who you refer to, what do you call Kimberly? Uh, Kibbers. Kibbers. Yeah. He calls her Kibbers instead of Kimberly. So Mickey's been with me for how long now? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. And uh, I think you've always worn a suit and tie since you've been here. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that brings us into, you know, episode two is called Suit Up. And we brought in none other than Chicago's best, Daniel George, custom suits. He goes by Daniel, not Dan. That's not right. Not Danny. Thank you. Not Daniel's son. That's right. Okay, so he's got one of the best showrooms in Chicago over in the New East Side. Daniel, maybe give us a quick one minute intro about who you are and your background a little bit. So I started a clothing company in San Francisco in 98. I've been doing it that long. Uh, it's all by appointment. We make made to measure suits, bespoke suits, outerwear, all kinds of things, custom shirts. Um, your measurements are stored on file, Matt, the way we met. Oh, I guess I was your client first. He was my client first. You reached out to me through an internet ad. Yeah. Uh, it worked. <laughs> and uh, we met, and I think the day before, no joke, I had a suit that ripped. And I met him for a coffee to kind of go over the buying process. And he told me he was in the suits. I said, no shit. I just had a suit rip. And he said that your suits don't rip as much. Was that the same? <laughs> yeah, as much. Because, yeah. Yeah, my, mine kept splitting down the pants. I don't know if it's because I'm overweight or what it was for. You're disgusting. Yeah. You're I get, yeah, too many donuts, maybe. Um, and, you know, so we got that started. And he actually was my client first. And then it got us going into maybe building up a suit. And for me, one of the things that I kind of always thought is, and I think I was more inspired by Mickey, is that, you know, how the progression of kind of more casual real estate has become, as well as other industries. Um, I know I started wearing more of like dress shirts and a, a dress pants when I got in the business. And as I started seeing more and more agents wearing like yoga pants and swimsuits to ap appointments, no joke, uh, I went into the suit category. And then once I had Mickey start with us, what was that? You said four and a half years ago? Yeah. Four and a half years ago, he came in wearing a suit and tie. And I'm like, man, that kid looks fucking dapper. You know, he's stepping up the game. And what, what made you want to wear a suit and tie? So I, I did that because I came here, I didn't know a single person except you. Uh, when I came the coolest guy in Chicago, that's okay. That's a good start. Uh, debatable. Uh, and I didn't know anyone, I didn't know a thing about real estate. So I thought, how can I make myself stand out? Sort of fake it as you make it. And that was to dress up better than anyone I could see on the street. Um, and that was my sort of way of sort of fitting in and feeling more confident with what I did. So a suit and tie kind of made you feel a little bit more comfortable in your skin. Yeah. Okay. And after me seeing him and then seeing, you know, literally Mickey comes strolling in with this like giraffe kind of like little tie clip here. He's got a, for those of you guys that are just listening, he's got a spectacle uh, tie clip on today. I kind of thought to myself like, man, I got to step up my fucking game because I can't have a guy that works for me coming in looking better than me. You look sloppy. Uh, I mean, I didn't look sloppy. I, mean, I still look sloppy. good, yeah, but it, I, I had to tidy things up. Okay, so he had maybe, maybe, and then literally after I see him, then that next day I went on a, an appointment. It was like a million dollar place, and the guy shows up straight from North Ave Beach in swim trunks, a Dago tee, and sunglasses to show the place. And I said, "Wow, where is this industry heading?" And Mickey's inspired me to kind of step up my game. And ever since then, I've been wearing kind of suits and ties. And I do agree that it kind of makes you feel a little bit more powerful. And, you know, in, in our office, we actually have now a dress code. So anybody that comes into our office and works for our group has to wear a suit and tie. It is mandatory to have the tie as well. We actually yeah. give out a fine. What's the fine, Mickey? $500. $500 no, I fine. Got he hasn't gotten it yet. But if you do not wear a suit and tie in our industry or at my office, it's a, it's a $500 fine. And I think that's because we're trying to, to kind of step it up. And, you know, Daniel, as a guy that, you know, is obviously specializes and this is like your livelihood of getting into uh, men's fashion and stuff like that. Do you feel that businesses across the board have gotten a little bit more like maybe too casual? I see it on the street, but here's the odd thing about my business is we see 14 clients a day on average just in Chicago. We also okay. have a showroom in San Francisco. So 
while people thought I was a little crazy for going into the San Francisco market because of the casual nature of California. Yeah, I would think that's like super laid back. Not even close. We're selling more three-piece suits and tuxedos. We have a big wedding business there. But everybody's coming in for real deal clothing. Does everyone uh, need it every day? No. But when they want to reach into their closet for something, people understand the investment of good clothing. Right. It's a confidence builder. And most of the clients that come in to see me, uh, even repeat clients, aren't wearing my clothing. They have it. It's an arsenal. It's in their closet. I'd like to see it on the street more frequently, but I know it's out there. And it's for special occasion. It's for, I wish it were for every day. You, it's every day. You, it's every day. That's right. great. That's, that's great for my business. But my business isn't suffering because of, uh, of a casual element out there. Um, I, you just see it less and less. But, man, we're busy. But, we're busy. We're but, selling suits. Don't you think, like, I mean, I remember, especially, like, well, I wasn't around in 1920s. But whenever you see any shows or, you know, TV flashbacks to it, I mean, people would just go out in the fields wearing suits and ties, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and nowadays, Hats, yeah. you go on the loop and you walk around and people are going to work. And they're, most of the people I see are in, in jeans and a polo. And I feel like it's a little bit more of a laid-back atmosphere. Yeah. Um, so the culture is changed. It, the culture has changed, and what, you know, I, I think we've kind of gotten more as a, a you know, we're a goldfish society. Everything's you know, go, 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 yeah. go. Um, and do you think that's um, so? You don't think that's affecting your business at all? No, on, on I anything? know it's not affecting okay. our business, uh, especially you know. There's a lot of guys that buy an online suit, yeah, and they come to us to either repair it or to replace it. And it might have only been five hundred dollars, but they hated it day one. It never right. fit properly, and it's not a quality. It suit. could it could have split in the pants or something like that. Who yeah, knows? It could have. It could have. Do you do a, you do alterations? Someone brings in a suit from someone else. You alter, you if alter. you're a client of ours, yes. He's, so if he's you, done them. Yeah. But if you, you got, let's say you went off the street, mm, they said, "I need this altered." No. no. No walk-ins are allowed there. Daniel George gets very mad if you just walk in off the street. <laughs> He'll get mad, but yeah, you need an appointment just because we're busy all day. Yeah. What what makes you so you know? Your industry, like real estate, is, is extremely competitive. What mm -hmm. makes you more successful uh, in the menswear department here uh, compared to your other competitors in the city? Easy. Easy answer. Is Easy. I'm I there. like that. I'm there every day. You're there every day. So you have the opportunity to meet with me, and I tell people I'm a dumbass about everything but menswear. Okay. There's nothing I don't know about this industry, um, and making a gent look nice and, and his suit fit properly, etc. cetera. Um, when you go to my competitors, you're meeting with salespeople. Got it. May or may not have experience. I know some great ones, but you also, being a novice, walking into somebody's custom clothing store or shop, you don't know who to ask for. You know, if you came to me, I'd tell you who to ask for at other, at other, at my com my competition. So the good guys go to if they were, didn't like you, you would actually stare them in a. I can look. We're not for everybody. Right. Um, you know, obviously we. I've got history behind me, yeah. but not too much. So if you go into the place with the the mahogany walls and the brass and the right. big chandeliers, old school. old school, you're gonna get old school. Right. Um, they're older gents. They're they're wearing bow ties and pleated pants, and they're lovely, but they're from a different era. So that's great for a lot of men. Well, it's it's a it's a little little Brooks Brothers, which is is good for what it is. Right. But so so what and kind of getting back into that, you said you've got some background. Like what what made you want to get into this this business? Parents. Your parents. So father was extremely stylish, well dressed man, not in the clothing industry, but a business dude, and he would take me shopping from eight years old on, uh, twice a year for spring and fall wardrobes. So I was a kid with some pretty nice clothes, a couple of suits, a couple sport coats, shoes to match, tennis gear, everything twice a year. Uh, so it was, it was instilled in me to look nice, presentation. It's a confidence builder. There's no question about that. It sounds like a pitch, but it is. So you feel better. When people say things like, oh, I don't have to wear a suit to work. I'm sorry, when I see the masses at an intersection all crossing the street, their shoulders forward looking down at the ground wearing sweats and t-shirts they might be comfortable on the outside but so you you you're a full believer of that you are pretty much people maybe respect you more if you're wearing kind of more of a suit and tie do you feel that way 100 percent, as long as it's appropriate you know depending on what you do but it's a it's a level of respect you have for your client to show up looking like that mm -hmm. right and uh 
you don't always have to. In fact, when people see me on the weekends or if I'm super casual, they almost don't recognize me. I've seen him in a, in a baseball hat before. Baseball cap. I have, you yeah. met me on a rainy day. I looked like a, a sad dog that had been left out in I the was cold. actually in the use of the sad dog. Yeah, so a little mopey. I was, a little well, mopey. It was raining. That, that was the day we closed on my condo. That's right, yeah. Pouring yeah. rain. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, I feel like... I personally feel a little bit more uh, powerful in a suit and tie. Mickey, you, you mentioned this earlier. You, you feel a little bit more powerful yeah. in a suit and tie. Absolutely, yeah. I think any time you, you, you feel good in your clothes, anything you, you, you walk into, whether it's a shrine, whether it's an appointment, you're going to feel more confident that way. And I'll tell you, you know, we, we go out in suits every single day, and if I've got a busy day, every single day, I'm going to get a compliment from someone. They say, you know, you're looking sharp, it's a good suit, you're looking dapper. And think, you look nice now, but think about how you'd feel if you were in a man suit, right? <laughs> think about that. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, that, what that means right? is, is a Daniel George suit since <laughs> yeah. he does not have one on. And that's a plug there for Daniel. Yeah, thank and, you. And, and, you know, kind of going off of that, I mean, like, I know when, when, when I'm negotiating a deal and I'm in a suit and tie, I feel much more confident even on the phone. Even though those people aren't seeing me, me mentally, I feel like a better person. It sounds crazy, but I do. And I also think it makes me personally, and maybe it's just an I thing, but, you know, feel better than the competition. Because like Mickey said, I mean, there's a lot of times where we show up at an appointment and they're in jeans and a polo and their clients look at us and say, wow, like you guys are like wearing, like looking dapper on a Sunday. And I'm like, a Sunday, every day is a work day, you know? And it's almost like we've won that competition. Now if we go into negotiations, that guy is already a little bit more intimidated to go against me because I'm already looking a little bit better. So. You know, Daniel, you obviously toured a little bit, uh, looked at some places. What was your experience? Did you feel maybe even like down on the real estate industry because if people weren't wearing suits and ties at all? I had the pleasure of dealing with ladies who were properly dressed. Um, one of the gents that represented the, the oh, seller yeah. was in a suit. Yes. Uh, so I didn't have a bad experience. and. For that reason, I think overall the experience was nice because everyone obviously behaved. You know, you can show up in a suit and not do your job. Right. But everybody was great. Um, I think it's worth mentioning that I found my place day one of shopping with you. It was, I think, I, I think well, it was what we we one of the first five places we saw. It's what it was. He did it end up buying. Fifth. But, I mean, I think that probably has something to say with that. His broker was amazing with listening to him <laughs> ahead of time. And Daniel was a big car guy. Uh, and I knew a garage was important, which we found. So kind of going back to, um, you know, wearing suits and ties and things of that nature, is there an industry, like to me, I think suits and ties, one of the main things I think of is bankers. Is there one type of profession that you see more of, whether it's bankers, stockbrokers, lawyers, whatever it is, that you see come into your business more often than others? Yes, consultants. Consultants. Consultants first. Huh. Um, and you think that's because they're presenting more? Mm -hmm. Okay. They're client facing more than anybody else, including okay. lawyers. Mm. So lawyers um, would be second, I would say. Bankers for sure, finance guys. Gangsters or generally older? Did you say gangsters? Gangsters, no gang. No we gangsters. Don't have any I don't gangsters. think we have gangsters. This Oh, see, see, Mickey's from South Africa for everybody out there. So, like, his still, the only thing he knew about Chicago when he first came here, he, he literally thought Al Capone was still alive, yeah, and he knew there was a Michael Jordan statue. So, <laughs> yes, the, the, the gangsters <laughs> are not, they're not apparent at least, but yes. Yeah. Um, is Please. there, like, so what about, like, now, I know my favorite color suit is blue, and I have maybe... 12 to 13 shades of blue. Purple. Working on oh, that. I, yeah, I got purple. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're working I know, on that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're try trying to get him into patterns. Yeah, yeah. Pat we're, it's time. It's time. I mean, maybe. It is time. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. But, yeah. but. I'm not telling you any more blue suits. <laughs> uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he gave me a, like a grayish one. I wasn't yeah. like, yeah, what I wasn't. Some I mean, pinstripes are a little gangstery to me, I still think. There's a way know. to do it. Okay. There's definitely a way to do it. <laughs> what, Can what I tell a story? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, go, please. What's your story? So, there's a lawyer whose girlfriend was a friend of the company. Okay. And she said, my man's not finding a job. He's a lawyer out of work, and he, he's been on a lot of interviews, and nothing's happening in a positive way. So I said, send him in. Let's, let's make him a suit. Okay. Um, he gave us a date of a, a, an important um, interview. So the day of his final fitting, uh, we suited him up for the interview. 
Prior to that, I meet him and he's wearing a tragic suit. Not to be mean, it, the suit was so dreadful, it's unexplainable. Fit, quality, you could hear it move. Everything Ooh. was terrible, plus he had an aggressive hairstyle, combed his hair forward in a point, he looked like he had a scowl on his face. So here's, here, this it sounds is like Professor Snape from Harry Potter right now. That's what I'm picturing, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so here's the plug for me. This is a plug for me, yeah, sorry. Yeah, please, this, yeah. That's how I'm this story yeah. ends. So he, he, he says, uh, I said, have you been wearing this suit? to the interviews. He goes, yeah. I said, have they been really nice? He goes, yeah. He said, sorry, man, they feel bad for you. And he goes, what? I said, you can't wear that suit. So it looked like a hand-me-down. It, it looked like a, a in a pinch suit. And I said, that's great. Not everybody can afford a custom suit. Right. But let's make the investment. So he comes in the day we change him out of that suit, put him in our suit, final fitting, and he goes directly to the interview. And I say to him, what's the firm? He's thinking, he can't figure out the name of the firm. I'm looking, I'm like, wait, are you serious right now? I go, what do they do? He doesn't know that either. So he is not the least bit prepared for this interview. Wow. And then the next day I get an email from him that says, thank you, I got the job. And I have to believe it's completely on his presentation. I made him change his hairstyle. Right. And we put him in a suit that fits of nice quality. Mm -hmm. No joke, the next day I'm not making it up. He got the job and there's, there's no way he got it on merit. There's no way. He didn't ask questions. He didn't know anything about the firm, and he got the job. Well, you know what? I do think it has to do kind of going back again about confidence. And, you know, to me, I, I agree that a custom suit is a very ex expensive investment. But I've had many custom suits, and I've had, you know, like, you know, boss suits and, you know, just like off-the-rack Nordstrom suits. And I will say, like, even when I've worn one of Daniel's suits, it fits so good that I don't know I'm wearing a suit and I feel more comfortable. It's not tight. It's not making my waist feel like really, you know, hurting or my legs are like super tight on you. And when you're in an interview, your mind is always going to go to the things that are uncomfortable. So if your suit doesn't look good, you're constantly be fixing your collar and things of that nature. And that's going to distract you from knocking it out of the park with an answer. So I do think that we going back to wearing the suits and ties and being comfortable. And for us, we're trying to get the real estate industry to kind of go on to that next level of being like, hey, let's, let's step up the game. These people are spending a lot of money. People are trying to eliminate our jobs. If we walk up showing up like, damn, man, those guys are fucking dapper. Let's do this. Like, people are going to feel more confident in the industry again. And I think, like, social media has played a large role in that, the way, like, brokers portray themselves. How do you think social media is playing into the fashion industry today, Daniel? All right, so we see uh, menswear everywhere, uh, right. fashion everywhere. Fashion doesn't have a lot to do with what we do. Fashion's a word I use reluctantly, because uh, we, we make menswear. We make, right. I, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Nobody's gonna come in and get epaulets on their shoulders because it's on the runway. We're making classic menswear, like Savile Row, what you might see in London on proper businessmen in New York City and Chicago. Um, so well, let's, let's say like modern fashion for you, you know? But it, it influences people. I'll tell you what happens every day, and sometimes they're my own images, but from Pinterest, people come in with folders of inspiration. Board, yeah. yeah, so they're looking at, yeah, what is it called, the boards? Uh, pin it boards? I don't know. Yeah, like I haven't pin, been on it that yeah. much, but yes. Well, Pinterest is awesome. It is, yeah. Whether, it's a, it's a huge clothes, platform. Yeah. It's for your home. It's, I mean, it's yeah. Uh, we it's should for use cars. it more. Yeah. Yeah, it's, we'll it's pin a, this podcast for everybody listening out there, okay? What about Insta? Do you, do you sell on Insta? You see that now, nowadays you can actually... And that's Instagram, Oh, Daniel. okay. Yeah, I don't know. He's, he, looks <laughs> a little, he, he looked a little Long confused word. there. Where's yeah, this guy from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Instagram. We do Instagram. Uh, you guys do Instagram. Oh, we, yeah. We I mean, we're huge, huge Instagram people. Like, yeah, we love almost it. every day there's a post from us. And but um, you see, now you can actually, you can sort of put a price tag on a jacket. And the person can click on that and then take you to the website and you can buy it on there. Yeah. Um, so we're just starting e-commerce, which is just to, to get off topic from custom so much because let me just say, I don't believe that every suit in your wardrobe has to be custom or needs to be yeah. by any means. It's nice to have two, a, a blue and a gray, or a blue and a blue suit in custom that fits beautifully. That's your confidence suit, your important day, uh, important meeting, or taking your wife out, taking your significant other out for a Friday night dinner, whatever, you want to look great. Uh, your significant other wants you to look great. It's, it's Always. exciting. Always, right? yeah. 
It's presentation. But but I, I think I think even using like Instagram and stuff like that, even for, for, for us in our business and for our clients when they see us, like every post we make, we're always in a suit and tie. In fact, I, I think I wore uh, shorts and a t-shirt in one post and people were like, where's the suit? Like, who is that guy? Like, people didn't even recognize it. It's, yeah, you're but, unrecognizable because of your brand and right. your image. And that's kind of the, the brand I feel like you should be portraying if somebody wants to take you seriously as a professional. Which, you know, it's respect. I, yeah. It really is respect. It is. And what what do you what about you? Like is there a social media platform that you personally use? Are you big on social media at all? Me personally? You no, personally? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. We're going to have bit. to change that. We got to get you more into like the Instagram. I think social media, if you're not using it, you're behind, but for somebody like yourself who could be, I'm not saying could be, but like you are a very influential, you know, like in the menswear yeah, industry in Chicago. That. Thank you for correcting but, that yeah, stream. Yeah. I mean, I'm streaming it the right way. Yeah. I think that people would, you know, if you Instagram, uh, use the stories more and more, yep. uh, you can actually add custom stories on there all the time. Your favorite clients that come in, I'm happy to be on there. Uh, well, you know, I think you're on there, but right. wait a minute. Um, I am, for, for the business, for sure. Right. But personally, I just don't do much in social media. But you're a personal brand. You have to recognize that. We got to get you on there. Like, and maybe even like you know, like the, I think IG, you know, stories would be huge for you. You said you do 14 interviews a day. We're well, not interviews. Uh, clients. Yeah, client Each client that walks in, hey, I'm here with John. He likes brown suits. We're getting him into a black one today. Hey, John, how you doing? You give him maybe even like a free handkerchief for being on there, right? And now everybody sees every single day, who are the 14 people Dan's seeing today? You know, and maybe not some, everybody wants to be on there, but to me, I'm like, that's kind of a cool thing to see. What'd you call me? Daniel. <laughs> I said Daniel. Did I say Dan? Dan. It's hard. I mean, I, why? Like Danny's like why? an easier one to say. I know Danny. Daniel. I actually don't Daniel. mind Danny as much as Dan. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, Danny boy. I got some problems. That's all right. It's kind of sweet. Like it's Daniel's song. Like I always want to say Daniel. So I'm a you big karate kid that. guy. Karate you know? kid. Yeah. Let's spend the last part of the podcast talking about Karate Kid. I mean, I could talk about Cobra Kai oh, on yeah. YouTube yeah. And being the greatest show Look I've it. seen in years, right years. But yeah. and talk about what do you use video at all in your business? Yeah, uh, we have uh, videos, professional videos on the website. Okay, that are a little more tongue in cheek. They're meant to be enjoyed, less about selling clothes, more about. The brand. I like branding it a little bit better. Yep. And there's nothing, you know, I, yeah. I, there's different ways to do things. Some things are more about like maybe upselling yourself and some things are about being like, wow, these guys look badass, right? Yeah, danielgeorge.com. All the videos are on there. It's a that, lot of I'm fun. I'm loving these plugs. Hits on the website? Yeah, it, yeah. We, yeah. Get, we get a lot of visitors to the website. What about, so, you know, you mentioned, you know, you're in Chicago, you started in San Francisco. Now, I think you what, originally closed that, came to Chicago. Now, you just reopened in San Francisco, correct? Mm -hmm. how's, so, how's that store doing out, out there? How, how are you attracting new clients out there? Um, it's the same way we do it here. It's, uh, go, people are finding us through Google and Facebook. Facebook ads? Uh-huh. But it's hard to search for a necktie without finding us. Um, you know the the key is words. necktie the proper way to say it instead necktie of tie. Is what it is, but okay. tie is what we all say. Okay, I, yeah. I want to make sure. See, I didn't know that. Now I yeah. just learned that. And from where I'm sitting, it looks like you're wearing a clip on. Is that correct? This is a not on? a clip on. It's not. Can you <laughs> yank on his yeah. tie? No, this sure. is a cut. I tied this myself. He's always asking me if we have clip on. So I did. Like, no clip on. I used to have. This is a true story. The way I learned how to tie a tie is we pulled up a YouTube video of a blonde hair girl in a bra. And my wife said, the only way you're ever going to learn this is with a girl that's very Scantily attractive. Clad, yeah. yeah. And wow. she's sick of tying my tie. She's like, watch this YouTube video. Yeah. And I guarantee you learn how to tie a tie. And I got to say, my wife is a very intelligent chick because I learned how to tie a tie after two times of seeing the video. Wow. Yeah. So, very nice. But so, I mean, so, you know, talking about the San Francisco, do you mm. feel people dress? Is there a different style oh, in yeah. San Francisco compared to Chicago? For sure. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's like we a have more bit, swag, right? But uh, yeah, I got it to say great things about both cities. Um, business is a little more buttoned up uh, and straightforward. My job's easier in Chicago because I don't have to second guess most of the clients. As much as I want to talk people out of one gray, one blue, uh, a Glen plaid, white shirts and blue shirts, that's easy if I keep my mouth shut and just take notes and then make the suits fit properly. That guy's easy. I'm always want to. I want to take people out of their comfort zone, and I want to push people into things they had no idea they could wear. You're next. 
uh, we're going to get into plaids and things, and people are going to see that. I guarantee it. Even if I have to make you a suit for free, and you you can't you free. can't argue with that. Yeah. And then once you wear it, then then we get you kind of a dose of that medicine. So you come back, you're like, all right, I get it now. This you is know cool. what though? I, I agree, cool. and that's kind of talking about like you know like I think people who are really trying to take their job seriously is going to have to start stepping outside of your comfort zone. Because I will say, when I first got in the business, I was totally okay with dress pants, dress shirt, and I thought it was I looked okay. And then like if, if 10 years ago me saw Mickey for the first time in an appointment, I would feel like an idiot. And I'd say, I gotta step outside my comfort zone to wear that suit and tie. Mm-hmm. So what would you say for someone who just wants to get started into kind of like getting into more of the dressy scene? Where does somebody start? Do they start with the first suit custom? Do they go to like a Nordstrom Rack or a men's warehouse? What would you suggest for let's say somebody who literally doesn't have much money? What's the first suit you would buy and wear? Okay, Nordstrom Rack is a great place to start if you know what you're doing, because you are definitely left to your own uh, knowledge and information. You're not going to get much help there. It's a great store. It's uh, it's uh, you know uh, discounted yeah. clothing, so you're not going to over. Yeah. There's not going to be a menswear clothing expert at Nordstrom Rack. It's highly unlikely that that's the case. But if you know how to always go down a size from where you think you are most people their suits are too big they're too baggy they're too long people will put a coat on and judge whether the coat fits by where the sleeve hits is that the biggest mistake you see people do when they're buying a suit is they're 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 trying to overcompensate and go a little bit bigger maybe maybe um yeah and it's it's just a matter of getting it properly tailored like you can buy the suit anywhere there's a cut i don't want to trash other brands but you mentioned one that's not great. It's just not. But it's it's where everybody buys their first suit, right. and it's it's there for a reason. They make a hell of a lot more money than we do selling three and four hundred dollar suits. Everyone hates them the minute they get them. I shouldn't say everybody, but most people don't like those suits right out of the gate. Because of the fit. It's just terrible. It's so terrible. Maybe it's not the good experience because if you start there, you, you have a bad experience. You think you know wearing a suit's the worst because that's it's very exa- uncomfortable. I was going to say that. So. A lot of people that say, I hate wearing a suit, or I don't have to wear a suit, or I don't like getting dressed up, there's a very good reason for it. Generally, the people that say things like that aren't wearing Tom Ford, Keaton, Isaia, um, Zenya suits. They don't have fine suits to compare them to. They're, it's kind of like, I think, if I think about the very first suit I've ever worn in my entire life, it has to do with like when I got fitted for a tux at one of those like cheap, you know, tux rental places yeah. and the shirt was literally cardboard yeah. and the, I think I had a four sizes too big, like suit coat. And I was yeah. like, this is, I'm like swimming in this thing. And that to me, my first memory was like, I hope I cannot wait till the second they allow me to pop this thing off. And maybe that's kind of how a lot of people feel. So like, I think that's it. And yeah. there's a lot of people, I think it's worth mentioning too, that, that don't equate um, quality across the board or presentation across the board. A lot of our clients will come in in, in an inexpensive or you know $500 suit, but they're parking a, a BMW or Mercedes. So they don't understand that across the board, look, you don't drive the suit, you don't drive the, the car into the boardroom or the meeting, as they say. I think that's about watches, but you, you the suit goes on your back. The suit follows you all day long, right. and the car goes in the garage, the suit goes on the man. Just think about it like that. You don't have to have 10 custom suits or 10 fine suits, but you need a couple. You need a couple. What, what's the biggest mistake, like kind of like fashion mistake you're seeing like professionals make? Is there like ones that, is it yeah. the over suit or the uh, oversized yeah, an, suit? Well, it's an ill-fitted suit. Fitting Most suit. men wear their what, ties. What's that, Mickey? I was gonna say fitting. The way they I fit. Mean, For like you sure. Can, you can sometimes yeah. get a cheaper suit. You can. you get it tailored, it altered nicely and it fits you properly. Yes. It'll look, it'll look a lot more, like it's worth a lot more than it is. Right. You're 100% right. Also, let's give the, the, the very attractive dude some credit. He can probably wear shittier clothes and get away with it. But most people have, no matter how attractive or unattractive you are, most people are insecure about their presentation and their looks, and the suit elevates. So a couple things that all men do, uh, uh, almost all of them, and some towns are worse than others. The Are you texting people right now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Young boy, that's awesome. He's sexting people right now. Pants, nice. Oh, I just got it. Thank you. Um, so the pants are too long. Most dudes, their pants are too long. 
their ties are too long. Got it. I get accused of my, not my pants being too short, but my tie being too short. Uh, I much prefer, I, you know, I don't use the keeper. I don't use collar stays. Uh, I'm kind of a weirdo when it comes to, you know, I'm not trying to sell people the stuff I'm wearing often. It's do as I say, not as I do. Right. And some of my clients break out into a cold sweat. If I got a guy 60 years old or, or a little older that's coming from Brooks Brothers that wants a better fit or better quality, they're looking at me a little bit nervous. And You're a little he, bit on the deep end sometimes. A little bit on the deep yeah. end. So they, they, but the show and the beauty of our showroom is it's uh, filled to the brim with clothing for our actual clients. Right now there's probably about two to 300 garments in my showroom that you may inspect. Yeah, I inspect the ties a lot and like to mess up the board. Yeah. You know, just, just, to, just to kind of rile everybody busy, up. yeah, something to do after you leave. So let's say like you had to win, uh, wear one suit for the rest of your life, yeah. just one. What would it be? Would you go regular suit? Would you go tux? Would you go suit jacket and pants? What would you do? Well, if it's one item, um, which is obviously hard to imagine, it would be an Admiral Blue shark skin suit. It's the thing we like sell the most, pretty close, yeah. yeah. But the th it's the item we sell the most. It's the garment that works everywhere. It's a super 130s cloth, so it's luxury Italian without being too fine. Got it. If you go too nice in fabric, it becomes less durable. Um, some of my entry level durable uh, entry level suits are durable in the sense that um, less luxury. If you think of the sheets at the Four Seasons, they feel great. They're amazing. Right, right. They probably have to throw those sheets out after every ten washings because they start to yeah. to to yeah. tatter the yeah. edges. So the sheets can't look like that. It's the same thing with Super 160 suits. Yeah, it feels awesome. Pure luxury. It's great for a tuxedo that you wear four times a year. Right. Not a suit you wear once a week. Got it. Why your suits keep tearing? Or is that because you too many times? I don't know what's happening to your suits. No. Um, it could, uh, well, it doesn't happen anymore. They're not yeah, my yeah. suits and they not never was, were. Not was before, yeah. yeah, but yeah. so he's made some transition and I think you're thrilled about it. But Absolutely thrilled. What we definitely we... reinforced the crotch and the seat on his pants <laughs> just out of pure fear. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't you know if he's doing splits. I don't and, know. Because it could uh, be know, on you a little bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Real estate professionals out there that are listening just know that like you want to make sure that they reinforce the pants because you are getting in and out of the car. You're kind of rushing around a yeah. lot. We do bend over for yeah. lock boxes. Yep. You know, we can be slightly overweight. Whatever, Mickey, we get it. Now, Daniel, <laughs> what do you yeah. think is the uh, outfit for like the ideal outfit for a professional today? Is it full suit and tie? Are you cool with just open collar? Okay. What do you think? So it totally matters, obviously, what you do. There'll be I, people I, no, that no, I disagree. I feel like you need to dress to impress. I mean, if you're going to the grocery store, you should be in a suit and tie, in my opinion. Okay, so I would I I subscribe, but realistically I mean, I would love it if that's how it was, but that's how it was in the 40s and 50s, I know, that's right? what I'm saying. I think we should go back to being more formal. So, yeah, I, I get on board with that, but it's not realistic. Uh, I think what we talked about, uh, I just thought of one of my other pet peeves, white shirt, because you said open collar. A white dress shirt, open collar, no tie, oh, big Oh, Mickey does pop. that all the time. Don't do that. When he so goes out. either wear, don't remove true. your tie, because it looks like you remove. He goes, it's not true. Is he making if shit I'm up? If I'm wearing a shirt, I'm wearing a tie. That's what you ought to Make do. Make it super formal. But it's a South wanna, African style, man. It's a flitter. I love guys, it. I love you know? it. So if you, I agree, suit, tie. But there's a way to do uh, a pattern shirt, an open collared, uh, colored shirt, something in lavender, um, like, uh, you know, just a, a darker shirt that you'd never think would go with the suit. Uh, a wildly patterned shirt with the mm -hmm. suit, open collar, no sock, an Italian loafer. Tell and me. a nice pocket square. Dark, Got dark shirts are fine difficult to wear. A dark shirt with a tie and a suit. It, uh, Isn't a black shirt with a tie? It'd like be kind of monochromatic. Like yeah. a, a nice graphite gray shirt with a, a silvery gray suit. But not, what about black? What black shirt? Black shirt yeah. It's pushing it. Yeah. It's a little, you know, it's That's a, a Daniel George move right there. What what <laughs> now do you think we're ever going to go back? To be like, I feel like we went from an extreme of like people working in the fields in a suit and tie to now people are wearing like sweatpants and a t shirt to work. Come on. Do you think so we're going to go back to It doesn't make any sense. I'm going to go back. No, no you right. know, it, it's, I I'm don't just throwing know. Them out there. Think Maybe this podcast that. will get people to turn it around. It would be nice. I saw a picture the other day of um, when the Cubs won the World Series 100 years ago. There was a picture taken outside the stadium. And every single guy there is in a, in a suit and tie. Nice. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to blogging. imagine, but yeah. that's how it was. Right. You know, when you and saw a man's what were legs today, back Mickey? then. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, t-shirt and shorts. Well, t-shirt like, and shorts. Now, you know, Daniel, every single guest, we have what we call the Fast Five. Mm. And it's where the co-hosts ask the guests yep. five really questions. Good. And Mickey, are you ready to read these off? I'm ready, yeah. All right. Okay, first up. And these are intense questions. <laughs> what is your inspiration? My inspiration is what I see on the streets. People, um, stories, uh, individuals I meet every day. My inspiration is friends, um, nature. Yeah. So you're always sort of critiquing, looking at people, what they're I'm wearing. A, I'm, a, I'm an observant guy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a people watcher and a, a I can't sit in Starbucks and read a book or, or get on my tablet. I can't do that because I'm watching what's going on around me. Yeah. So inspiration, I don't know, life. Got it. Okay. Um, why did you start what you do? Oh, so you, my attorney advised me not to answer that question. Next. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we can't go until you've answered it. All right, what is it again? <laughs> why did you start what you do? Um, it was, I was inspired by my parents very being very stylish. Very, yeah. you yeah. know, I can remember my father, uh, people would, would see him and say, who, who is that? Who's that guy at school? Like I'd say, that's like my dad. Famous. Yeah. 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 I'd say, that's my dad. And they'd be like, wow. And it just, I remember it like it was yesterday. And of course this, it was definitely not yesterday. And he's since passed, but just incredible style. Yeah. Well, a long time ago, actually. Uh, what is something you could be doing better, if anything? Oh, there's always something to improve on, not if anything. Come on. Oh, yeah, no, I, I thought you meant me. Like, you were chiming in, like, oh, Daniel, you could do a lot of things better. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, Matt. It's nice. Um, what could we do better? So my fear is growing too fast, and we are. We're growing too fast. We've hired about five people in the last two months. So I'm worried about customer service not being 100%. Everyone can't be 100% happy with me right now because of the amount of growth we're doing, but we're working on it. Lines of communication are open, and everybody's heart and mind is in the right place. And we're also working on some things, some more technical things to make things faster, smoother, easier, better. But my biggest fear is too much growth um, where somebody gets lost in the cracks or feels like they're not as important a client as they are. Yeah, I've heard that because somebody else told me they were like 99% happy with you. So that, that makes sense. I appreciate it. <laughs> I like it. that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the way it works now, if someone comes into your store, they're going to see you? Uh, they have the option to see me. But because of the amount of clients we have, the, so what's interesting is there are two other salespeople in the Chicago showroom. And they, some people like them more than me. That's a fact. Some people really enjoy meeting with Justin or Jake. And so... That is an opportunity. Some people who have never met me want to meet with me personally. Clients I've been working with for years won't see anybody but me. Yeah. And then some people prefer to meet with the, the younger dudes, uh, other people. So yeah, delegate. Yeah, if yeah. you want to meet with me, you meet with me. Yeah. It might just take an extra week or two to get on a calendar. That's all. Okay. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, so the plan is right now. Uh, maybe an additional city or two, but that's after having said what I just said, working out some of the kinks and getting a little cleaner and smoother on the operational side of the business. And then once those, those programs are put in place, um, I've got my eye on a couple of cities. City that you're interested in. Yeah. And then um, some other things I don't really want to talk about right now, but there's, there's some cool growth happening. Okay. And lastly, what makes you Chicago? Um, what makes me Chicago? Well, are you born in Great Chicago? No, born nope. In. From the East Coast. Yeah. East Coast. Uh, families from Connecticut. Went to school in Florida, San Francisco after college. Um, sold my business in '07 in, in San Francisco. Uh, it wasn't even for sale, but somebody made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Yeah. And then um, moved to Chicago, started the business here. So, fast story is when I first moved here, I, I wasn't sure I liked it. It was a, a very different pace and a different scene than, than California and San Francisco. And I had really grown roots there, 15 years in San Francisco. Wow. So leaving was difficult. It didn't matter where I went. So not knowing a lot of people, am I running too long? No, no. Um, not knowing a lot of people here, it was, I didn't want to go to New York. New York's too chaotic for me. Yep. I love New York to visit, but 
I can't imagine living there. Chicago was a place I'd visited a great deal when I lived in San Francisco. So I, it took about a year or two before I really started feeling like this was home. And now I love it and wouldn't trade it for anything. And I have a home in San Francisco as well. So I feel like I've got the best of both worlds. Yeah. Two um, different worlds, yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're very, very different, but both interesting in different cool ways. Mm -hmm. Nice. But um, to answer your question, um, I just feel like a, a, a part of the tapestry here. Um, you know, I love living here. I love the seasons and um, the traffic. I wish we could do something about that. It's getting better. It's not as bad Is as it? L.A., you know. I um, don't know. Now I have, almost late for this podcast. Yeah. Now, I have, I have a, a, a question that was brought to me yesterday. That I, I, I'm itching to know what you would how would you answer this? Okay. Do, you, do you love to win or uh, do you hate uh, to lose? Oh, you got to think about that one. Yeah. There is a, in my opinion, there's a right answer. Apparently on interviews, there's a right answer. But uh, to me, I know what the yeah. right answer is. Huh. And we both answer differently. Yeah, but well, that's because I answer the right way. Huh. Well, they actually answer the wrong way. I'm trying to think of what the main difference is. Well, do you love to win or do you hate to lose? There's, you know. It's, I think I love to win. Okay. Yeah. Well, I agree with him, huh? Yeah. You yeah. You look that. disappointed. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. You, you wanted to have a kindred wrong, yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, was, that, that was the right answer. That's. I mean, oh. to, yeah. to these corporate guys, that's the right answer. To me, I hate to lose. Winning is easy. I could losing see that. Losing is hard. I, I hate losing. I kind of yeah. suspected that yeah. would be your take. Yeah. I well, think what you and I are doing is taking the positive approach. Yeah. And he's it's not taking that. It's yeah. not taking the negative approach. It's Maybe. saying that like. The winnings are great, but losing, God, I, I cannot, I can't breathe with losing. So, anyways. <laughs> were, were you an athlete? I, uh, that kind of. I mean, you know, I, I'm more of a businessman more often than right, that. Okay? Right, right. So, Daniel, where can people find you and what do you want to plug? Um, we are on Michigan Avenue between Lake and Randolph. We're by appointment. Okay, by um, appointment only. Yep. So, when you schedule with us, you get an hour and you get us full attention. That's why we're by appointment. Okay. If you, if you stumble in. Uh, there's no, you know, nobody to really talk to you or take, take time aside. Mm -hmm. So that's why we get you on calendar. Um, all the new fall fabrics are in and, uh, top coats, man, all the bad top coats. I don't want to see them anymore. They're just terrible shoulder pads. They, they're way too long. They're way too big. You, you, if you're wearing a nice suit, you need to wear a nice top coat, Put that's a right. nice top coat on top of that suit. All you need is one, just one nice top coat. Do you have a website? DanielGeorge.com. D-A-N-I-E-L-G-E-O-R-G-E.com. Yes. 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 So we got it out there. So, right all right, guys. Well, make sure to tune into our next episode. Subscribe to our podcast. Like our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram. Thanks for listening to the Matt Literacy Project. We'll see you next week.